So uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the presentation of the Chautauqua County Economic Development Strategic Plan. My name is Nate Aldrich and I'm a special projects coordinator with the County Department of Planning and Development. I also wear another hat. I'm an economic development manager with Critic. And through that role, I also manage the Partnership for Economic Growth. So we're joined today, or we will be joined shortly by County Executive PJ Wendell. We have Deputy County Executive for Economic Development and CEO of our County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency, Mark Geis. We have Senator George Borello, and we're pleased to have our project consultants, Dan Gunderson and Alex Tranmer from Camoin 310. So we're concluding what's almost been a year-long process, which include, included pivoting, going back to the drawing board after the onset of COVID-19. Uh, the second phase of our efforts, the development of a countywide comprehensive economic development strategy is now complete. So we kicked this process off last August, uh, following the completion of the phase one Chautauqua County Economic Development Organizational Plan. This recommended the creation of the Partnership for Economic Growth. So as we were advancing the second phase of this effort, we did take, take some extra time this spring to take into consideration the COVID-19 crisis, reopening the economy and recovering from the economic impacts of the shutdown. So we have a lot more work to do in this front, where we're excited to use this mechanism of the partnership to tackle this and other important economic development issues going forward. So we'd like to thank Kamoin, who will be presenting the plan in broad strokes today for the help in getting us to this point. Uh, you know, one thing our team is really proud of, and we appreciate the involvement of more than 115 individuals, dozens of organizations, agencies, and municipal le leaders that were integral to the development of this plan. So we genuinely appreciate the time all of them have dedicated to this initiative. And especially, we're thankful to the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, the Ralph C. Wilson Junior Foundation, Chautauqua County, and the CCIDA who help fund this process and make this plan a reality. Finally, the last several months, as we're all aware, have certainly been challenging for everyone. So what we'll be discussing today is really more important than ever. We need your support and advocacy, your partnership and creative creativity in order to move forward with this plan and implement its recommendations. So with that, I'll hand it over to Mark Geis, who will frame the presentation. Mark. Uh, thank you, Nate. I did get a text um, that stated that they could not see the video. So I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, I wanted you to know that. Um, well, thank you, Nate. Um, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in today and for the efforts, as Nate said, of so many individuals, partners, municipalities, elected officials, and others for being a part of this process, adding value to the plan and, and for their support, collaboration, and advocacy for the plan now and into the future. First and foremost, I'd like to thank County Executive PJ Wendell for his leadership, participation, and advocacy in the process, and for joining us today. We'll hear from him at the conclusion of the presentation. I'd also like to thank Senator Borello for being a key impetus in getting this initiative underway more than two years ago. We had many, many conversations about how we were gonna start this, um, where we were gonna get the funding to do it, and so here we are. Um, I'd also like to thank my fellow partnership board members. Uh, those include uh, Matt Churchill, who is the partnership co-chair and advocates, um, ad I'm sorry, um, uh, council member uh, of the advisory board, uh, PJ Wendell, county executive, 
Mark O'Dell, Legislature PED Committee Chairman, Greg Edwards, Advisory Council Co-Chair, Sham Baggett, Advisory Council Co-Chair, Gina Paradis, Housing Co-Chair, Todd Tranum, Tourism Work Group Co-Chair, Dan DeMart, Workforce Readiness and Development Co-Chair, Don McCord, Community Development Work Group Co-Chair, and Courtney Curatolo, Business Development Work Group Co-Chair. I would also like to thank our Private Sector Advisory Council. Those individuals include co-chair Greg Edwards from the Gebby Foundation, he's the Executive Director, co-chair Sham Baggett from Baggett, Laredo Baggett, CPAs, Matt Churchill from Water Street Brass, Tori Urgang, Chautauqua Region Community Foundation, Rick Johnson, Johnson, Johnson and McCoyak CPAs, he's retired, Alex Singleton, El Greco Furniture, Rich Ryan, National Comedy Center, Lori Lafargean, Cummins Engine, Diane Hannum, Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, Dan Reiningda, Lakeshore Savings Bank, Jay Baker, Jamestown Plastics, and Michael Hill from Chautauqua Institution. I'd also like to thank Kamoin for all of their hard work and for being flexible as we pivoted during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to the above listed individuals who helped make this plan a reality, I'd also like to thank the many other partners, municipal leaders and community members for your participation in the, and for the value you added to this process. Last but not least, I would like to thank the um, CPEG staff and staff support, which includes Monica Simpson, Jeanette Labello, and of course, Nate Aldrich. I can't think of a better person than Nate to be managing this effort. He is in a word, terrific. Just to be clear, this isn't a county government plan. It's the first of its kind, uh, I'm sorry, it's the first of its kind, countywide comprehensive economic development strategy to be implemented by both public and private sector partners under the umbrella of a not-for-profit economic development agency, Critic the umbrella organization for the Chautauqua County Partnership for Economic Growth. Now I wanna talk a little bit about framing the strategy in terms of assets, challenges, and opportunities. First of all, assets, we have many. I think we have the right stuff. We have unparalleled natural assets and quality of life amenities. We have an incredible manufacturing base in this county, which is our leading sector. We have unique and world-class tourism destinations and historic assets. And we have a Phoenix, you know, we have the National Comedy Center, we have Chautauqua Institution, and so many others, um, which are institutions that we will continue to capitalize on. Now for challenges, we have many. As Kamoin will elaborate, while there have been a significant number of positive developments in recent years, as I just stated, we were not trending in the right direction even before COVID-19, and now the challenges are even greater. We asked Kamoin to give us an honest appraisal of where we are at today. They've done so and have completed a comprehensive economic base analysis from which specific strategies were developed. They will discuss some of the more worrisome trends. And you know what, sometimes the truth hurts. Now about opportunities, we have many. Clearly, we have some pretty significant challenges to overcome. However, I am confident we can come together as partners to leverage the county's assets to move our economy forward, but, only, um, but will only be successful through collective action. We've developed five game-changing initiatives backed by additional strategies to be led by work groups, and in some cases, the collective partnership itself, which Kamoin will discuss in some level of detail. That being said, I am confident we can come together and utilize this blueprint as a means to make some game-changing mid-course corrections to our economy. It's all about creating life-sustaining jobs and opportunities for the citizens of Chautauqua County and improving the quality of life for everyone. Before I introduce Kamoin, 
I would like to provide an opportunity for Senator Borello to say a few things about this initiative. Again, George was instrumental in getting this underway in 2018 when he was county executive. So I think it's only fitting that he should have the opportunity to talk about the completed strategy. After Kamoyne discusses the economic uh, development strategy, I will have a few remarks and then County Executive Wendell will conclude um, with um, closing remarks. So George, you wanna say a few things? Sure, Mark, thank you very much. And uh, you know, this is really uh, kind of gives me goosebumps to, to be here and, and watch this. You know, this was something that we talked about uh, really back at the beginning uh, of my uh, time as County Executive back in 2018. The whole idea was, uh, what do we do to ensure that we're using our resources effectively and efficiently by having a countywide economic development strategy? And, uh, you know, that's why this was so important, uh, because it hadn't really been done in our county before. So we set out to look at opportunities and look at examples of how this could be done. Uh, we visited other counties. Uh, and in the end, uh, we enlisted the help of, of, of Kamoyan Associates. And, you know, I, I couldn't be uh, more proud and more happy you know, with where we are so far um, because we do face a lot of challenges. And, you know, the development of, of the Partnership for Economic Growth, uh, the development of this strategy, uh, so much of it is tied uh, to the hard work of everybody on, on this call. Uh, you, Mark, uh, you know, certainly Nate, um, Dan Gunderson. I remember sitting with Dan uh, late at night um, to discuss when, when I was doing my uh, stakeholder interview with him, discussing, you know, what the, you know, what the vision was and what we wanted to see. And, and what I explained was, it's not about my vision. It's about what is the right vision for our county and how does each uh, stakeholder fit into that vision? Uh, and, and how do they have take ownership in it? And that's really what uh, Gunderson, you know, with Dan Gunderson and, and Kamoyne Associates had run with. They, they ran with the idea of how do we make this an inclusive process that ensures that we have, that we are not only effectively and efficiently using our resources, but ultimately uh, that we are including all the major stakeholders, the municipalities, the private sector businesses, the not-for-profits uh, to ensure that our economic development strategy is, is cohesive and something that, that we can move forward and that everyone can take ownership in. And um, that's really culminating in today's presentation. Uh, I, I'm very excited and proud to have been there at the beginning. And I, I certainly appreciate um, uh, County Executive Wendell's uh, embrace, embracing this effort and this strategy and, uh, and continuing to move it forward. Uh, and I think it's the right thing for our county, especially right now with all the challenges we're gonna face. Um, the, uh, the economic impact of this uh, pandemic is going to last for years and we need to be prepared for that when it comes to continue to move our economic development strategy forward and continuing to showcase the quality of life that we have here so those folks that are making decisions about where they might want to live or move their business uh, or, or, or start their own business um, are going to choose us over other areas that's critically important right now because people are making major life-changing decisions about their futures based on the impact of what's going on uh, not only with the pandemic, but other, you know, socio-political uh, you know, unrest and so forth that's going on throughout the state and our nation. And we have the opportunity to showcase our area, but we cannot do that without having all of the right pieces in place when it comes to our economic development strategy. So thank you again. Appreciate being a part of this and appreciate being here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Really appreciate that. Um, now I'd like to introduce Dan Gunderson and Alex Tranmer from Kamoyne Associates, who will provide approximately a 40 minute overview of the uh, Chautauqua County Economic Development Strategy. So with that, um, thank you, Dan and Alex. Um, so please uh, proceed. Thanks, Mark. Um, and thanks everyone. So again, I'm Alex Chandler. Dan Gunderson will take over the uh, second half of the presentation here, but I'm gonna take us through the first little bit um, and I think I just want to start by echoing that this has really been a great process and we've certainly learned things along the way um, and I'm happy to, to take it up to this point. Um, like Nate mentioned, we are recording. So if for some reason you'd like to refer to this later on, we will have that. Um, or if you know of someone that would like to view the presentation that wasn't able to make it today, please let us know and we'll make sure to get it out to you um, after this. Um, 
while this is a final presentation, I always like to think of this as a launch. You know, this is really active. This isn't necessarily the end of one process. It's really the just the step into the next phase. Um, I think a year ago when we began this endeavor, I don't think anyone seriously considered a global pandemic as a threat in the typical SWOT analysis that we would have done in strategic planning. Um, but I think the situation has shown why adaptive strategic planning is so critical to account for unforeseen circumstances. Um, like I said, this is not necessarily a linear process with a clear beginning and a clear end. I think the reality is that circumstances are going to continue to change and shift and mold based on elections, the public health environment, many other factors. And the collective willingness to grow with this plan is just as important as the plan itself. So just in terms of where we're going today, um, I'd like to try something here and see if I can launch a poll you should see a poll pop up on your screen. I just wanna get a sense for how many folks were at our draft presentation meeting back in April um, to see how familiar this group is with the plan. All right, we've got some answers coming in. Give everyone another second here. Okay, uh, let's see, you guys should be able to see these results. So we're almost split here. Okay, so this is interesting. We've got sort of some new folks with us. All right, I'll get that off the screen. So um, we are gonna take a little bit of a step back then and do just a brief overview on some context um, for how the plan came to be, understand some of the rationale behind the plan in terms of economic context, the baseline and where Chautauqua County stands in terms of its relationship, relationship to uh, Western New York and the state and the nation as a whole. I'll turn it over to Dan and he'll talk a little bit more about the content of those strategy, um, about the game changers that um, Mark had mentioned. And then we'll talk about next steps and early wins. Um, we've already seen some really exciting progress from the plan um, and I want Nate to, to end with that as well as we go into the launch. All right, so taking a little bit of a step back, um, this is sort of the third step in a, a multi-layer process, but this strategic planning process began about a year ago, so 2019, but prior to that, in 2018, the county first took the step to organize for success um, in 2018, and that's when the Chautauqua County Partnership for Economic Growth, or what we refer to as the partnership, that's when that was creation, created, and that was formed to marshal resources, collaborate across sectors and enhance the county's economic development capabilities. So with that organizational structure in place, the next step was the plan. Um, and that's where my colleague Dan and I came into the picture um, to, to really set up this, this process. And so the county government took the lead to initiate, um, but like Nate said, uh, there were hundreds of stakeholders involved across public, private, nonprofit, and philanthropic. Um, partners. And these partners are already working collaboratively to execute the strategies that are in that plan. Now in the middle of, of planning this, actually really towards the end, the partnership and leaders across the country had to, across the country and county had to confront the evolving COVID-19 crisis and the lasting impacts that the public health and economic crisis would have across all sectors of the economy. And while crisis management and the immediate response to support businesses was crucial to maintain economic stability, the county and its economic development partners approached this as an opportunity to adapt to market changes, just like the Senator was talking about, and to be ready to leverage Chautauqua's assets to capitalize on these lifestyle and business shifts that we've already begun to see in practice. So we now find ourselves in step three implementation and launch. 
And like I said before, this, this really is not a static step. It's, it's the, not the end of the line. It's really the start of a new phase. And executing on the plan requires consistent communication across partners, constant feedback and adaptation, not being afraid to use lessons learned and measuring progress to date. Now the COVID-19 crisis was a prime example of adapting to the current climate, responding to immediate needs without abandoning long-term planning initiatives. So just as we were in the finishing stages of the plan, the county jumped into action to respond to business needs as the pandemic unfurled across the state. So bringing together the stakeholders that were, that were already assembled for strategic planning, these partners jumped in to where their expertise was needed in terms of recovery. And thinking more about recovery and next steps, what we did in the plan was we broke down the county's response into two phases. So the first phase really being immediate mobilization and data gathering. The county jumped into action, um, abandoned norms, and really met the needs of the here and now. So many of you were part of this work as well and are part of this work, um, which included things like establishing an emergency working capital loan program or applying for EDA CARES Act funding. Uh, or creating just a web page to house all of the many resources that are available across local, state, private, and regional sources. Now, phase two is really more about using that information that was taken in during recovery and leveraging that to reopen and grow strategically. So whether this is helping businesses adjust to more online sales, uh, thinking about housing strategies as rural and small cities become more desirable places to live, or prioritizing, or say and or, prioritizing broadband connectivity to encourage remote work on a long-term basis. These are all ongoing effort, efforts that the county will continue to advance as part of this strategic plan. So if we circle back and take a step back from COVID um, and look at the economic context for this plan, Think about the situation surrounding um, the county and the baseline that really set the stage for the plan. So as part of our data analysis portion of uh, our research, we wanted to understand what the point, where the point was that the county diverged from the rest of the state and Western New York in terms of economic performance or this is, I should say, really our hypothesis. We wanted to see you know, if this was the case and confirm if it was. And so along with many other manufacturing strongholds, uh, the county's economy took a hit from companies offshoring manufacturing jobs at the turn of the century, um, faced systemic challenges that continued to stifle economic growth, and then cutbacks and consolidations that followed during the Great Recession left lasting impacts. So you can see in this uh, chart here that we're all looking at on this slide, you see change in jobs by percent change. And we're looking at three geographies here. And I think I can use my laser here. So this top line here is all New York State counties as a whole, so it's one geography. The second line here is the five Western New York county regions as a whole. And then this last line here, the um, uh, navy blue line is Chautauqua County uh, unto itself. And so you see from 2001 to 2009, um, or really 2008, you see the three geographies adding and gating jobs at a similar rate, sort of more or less along the same path. And then we see the Great Recession in 2008, and we see um, job growth drop off for the county, while Western New York as a whole sort of plot along and then um, New York State counties as a whole continue to sort of make progress back up to pre-recession levels just about around 2019. Now I should say that this is not, um, this is not, this is, this considers net new jobs. So during this time, it doesn't mean that no jobs were added. It just means that um, overall no new jobs were there was negative job loss. Um, 
So in the strategy, what we really did was we worked backwards to say, how do we close this gap right here between Western New York counties as a whole and Chautauqua County and Chautauqua County and the rest of New York state? What elements are lacking right here um, that we can put into this strategy to promote economic prosperity? So what are the industry resources, um, site readiness implications, workforce needs, um, private investment? We know that jobs are only one measure of economic prosperity, but if we can start with job creation and move the needle on other economic indicators, of course, that will start to move other aspects and improve other qualities of life. And so while we took, we did our data analysis and then we took an inventory of the economic, physical, infrastructure and social assets of the region, we aligned those with the market opportunities looking to see where there was a natural fit for the county to leverage its existing resources. So one example might be um, sites and land and redevelopment opportunities. After a decade of substantial redevelopment in the Buffalo Niagara area, the supply of remaining sites with appropriate infrastructure or space for redevelopment is low. And Chautauqua County has the benefit of available space and an inventory of industrial land and brownfields which are eligible for federal incentive to bridge financing gaps, to make projects economically feasible and very desirable to developers. So site preparation investment, while costly on the front end, certainly has lasting positive impacts on the region and job creation potential. Now, while preparing larger sites for business attraction is one strategy to grow the county's economy, Cultivating the business community from within the region provides near-term opportunities to grow the economy. It's essential to take steps to showcase resources that currently exist for startups and small businesses that wish to grow and really not just showcase the resources, but really boost the idea and culture around entrepreneurialism. Finally, another opportunity that's perhaps even more relevant in light of COVID-19, as companies look to onshore some of their work or shore, shore up their supply chain is the region's manufacturing legacy. Today's manufacturing plants are a combination of digitalized processes managed and supported by industrial technicians, among many other important roles. And workforce training, the availability of skilled labor is critical to ensure that manufacturing remains a viable and profitable industry in Chautauqua County. No. With the institutionalized knowledge and established resources in manufacturing, growing and adapting this cluster must be a top priority. So if you think about what success looks like, if we take a step back and think, okay, five, 10 years from now, how are we going to know that we leveraged economic opportunities, that economic prosperity um, spread throughout the county? There's many different ways to quantify that um, and define that. One of the things that we talked about in the plan specifically was median household income. And over a 10 year period, how this plan can support incremental gains, which in the end lead to transformative results. So specifically, the plan calls on partners to make these transformative investments that will grow median household income. And as of February 2020, um, the county actually ranked last in terms of median household income yeah. among New York State's That's 57 exactly. counties. So now, little teacup dog. Oh, can we just make sure that everyone's on mute if they got a second, just to double check? Um, and so using median household income as a target will focus attention and help to move the needle on other economic indicators like poverty, which are important to the overall wellness of the county's economy. So median household income, that's sort of one we're showcasing here, but the plan also includes a series of 20 indicators from publicly available sources that are going to be tracked on an annual basis to monitor the macro economy activity of the region. These, these indicators aren't just a measure of movement in the economy for the county, but they're also informing future decision making by county leaders. Oh my God, is he cute? 
And so perhaps um, the most important question, um, how do we make this happen? Implementation, how is this plan going to be executed? Um, the plan provides a roadmap for leadership and staff to follow over the next five years and enables partners on the ground to work towards those shared goals. What we've done is the strategy breaks out um, the roles by the partnership, the IDA, and then countywide partners. So we indicate which group is best suited to lead what initiatives. And this all came out of the many discussions we had with the stakeholders over the course of nine months or so. And the structure anticipates flexibility and encourages partners to keep leading with their strengths. Um, along the way, we certainly anticipate that additional relationships will grow across organizations, funders, and other stakeholders to continue progressing priorities of the plan. Um, I'm going to leave it there on implementation, and I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Dan, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about the content of the plan, these game changers um, that are going to be executed by these partners. Thank you, Alex. And uh, it's fun. It's fun to be with so many friends, even if it is virtually. Uh, we've spent uh, two, three years with you working through to get to this point. And so it's really an honor to be able to um, provide you with um, the essence, if you will, of what the report is recommending we do. What do we do? Where do we go from here? Um, I can't give all of that um, context because there are over 91 substantive recommendations in the strategy and they're broken up by a uh, working group and I'm going to walk through I'll, I'll pick out a few of those and, and try to give it some context as well why I think those are uh, key ones but at your leisure we want you to be able when the report is is online to peruse it go through it look at it uh, you'll see many roles for yourself, for the organizations that you're with, the interests that you represent. You'll see something in there for yourself. How this is working here is that uh, the partnership, as you know, was established. It has those five work groups. Uh, they're indicated on the right-hand side of, of the screen there. And so we tried as best we could to organize the strategy into these five buckets. Now, within each bucket, within each one of these categories, there's one game changer. Um, and I'm gonna describe each one of these in a second. Um, but you know what? I don't think any of these game changers are going to be aha moments for you because there are things that have been talked about for a long time. For instance, in the workforce area, the brain drain. So what we do is we say, we know that's a, a major issue. What is it that we think we need to do? How should we approach that particular issue? And if we can hit that issue, everything else will fall in line. And so those are what the game changers are all about. Within uh, each one of these subject areas, not only do we have a game changer, but then we have a number of uh, recommendations. And in fact, there are about 20 per team here, making up the 90 to 100 uh, recommendations. And each one of those recommendations are divided into different areas. Okay, these could be for the partnership to take on by itself, the working groups within the partnership. Some of these have nothing to do with the partnership or even with the county. They're the stakeholders. And what do we think those stakeholders and the partners might be able to do to support this overall plan? And then lastly, what is it that the IDA uh, the county uh, and its partners can be doing, aside from the partnership, what is it that they can be doing to move uh, the needle? So let's get into it. Let's get into it. The very first one, and this is the game changer in the business development area, is to develop appropriate sites for advanced manufacturing, science and research and other key in industries. Now, if you've been around a while, and most of us have been, we go, well, geez, that doesn't sound very exciting. I, I, you know, we're always talking about sites and the need for to develop them. And yeah, okay, we've heard about advanced manufacturing for quite a while now, but why do you think that is the game changer? I'll tell you why it's the game changer. It is the game changer because it is the, A, the legacy of Chautauqua County. 
it's something that it needs to build on. And the timing globally is coming back around in favor of the county. Let me just explain that. When we looked at the research, we know that the location quotient, that's a, a measure of how intense the industry is in any economy, it's twice the national average in Chautauqua County, that is manufacturing, twice. And that is a profound location quotient advantage. There is a lot of it here relative to the whole. So much so that 17% uh, of all the total jobs are related to manufacturing and a quarter of the regional, uh, the gross regional product is also coming from manufacturing. So you don't want to give up on it. And, uh, you know, I think most of us can agree that in the early part of the 21st century, there were a lot of voices that were throwing their hands up and saying, manufacturing is dead. We ought not to be focusing on that. We need to diversify our economies, go in the service area, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I think there's no better um, example of this for me uh, than hearing Andy Grove. Andy Grove was one of the founders of Intel. And uh, late in his career, they asked him, what's your major regret? And he said, moving so many of Intel's operations overseas. And he used an analogy. He said it was like the scientist, a young scientist just before the age of enlightenment, which would be, oh, the early 17th century or so. Uh, you know, this, this was a guy with a lot of great ideas, but they were, it was heresy back then. And so he was sent to the guillotine. And on the morning in which he was to lose his life, the blade did not drop. Now, back then, when the blade did not drop, that was a sign of divine intervention. And the person was expected to go free. But this guy was a scientist. And so he kind of looked up from his spot there with his, where his head was locked. And he saw the problem. And he told him how to correct the problem. The blade came down. He lost his life. Andy Grove said that's what America did when he gave up on manufacturing. Um, and so we can't do that. And the very critical reason why, over two thirds of the advances, innovation, patents, the things that drive us forward, two thirds of it comes from the private sector and almost all of that from manufacturers. That's what's happening on the manufacturing floor. They're looking for those things that aren't working. They're trying to figure out how to make them work and they make them work and we progress. So we think it's a future of Chautauqua is its past, but it's a new future in a new kind of manufacturing. Just as America has learned its lesson, things are coming back around. We're moving out of the COVID um, uh, crisis slowly, but we're moving there and things are changing. Now, what's happened here in Western New York, Erie County, Niagara County, they had been the hotbeds of, of manufacturing for years, but as they diversified their economies over the last 10, 15 years, there's been less and less of that as a percentage. Chautauqua County has kept it. Chautauqua County now is the center, we could argue, in many ways, um, for what should be. And uh, so that's what we are, are looking at. We also note that a lot is happening in the Cleveland and Western Ohio markets and somewhat in the Pennsylvania, the Western Pennsylvania, and that the county is ideally situated here. There are over 150 um, international firms in Western Ohio alone and another 150 bio labs from Cleveland on out. They need places to be able to commercialize the product that is coming out of that. Northwest Pennsylvania is topographically challenged Chautauqua County, there's your opportunity, but you don't have the sites. What we're thinking of is we need uh, the sites that are about 100 to 200 acres. That would be sweet. That would be the sweet spot. Um, so uh, the strategy outlines um, more about that. Now, that's a game changer. There are a number of initiatives as well, as Alex mentioned before. Um, Alex, you want to change that slide to the next one? Um, 
The other thing that we want to focus on, we believe this is a partnership responsibility. You see the logo of the partnership on the left-hand side, the people around the table joining together. Uh, that, that indicates the, the new partnership. Yes, it needs to be involved in inventorying these sites, determining the readiness for development, but also on entrepreneurship. And in particular here, we mean uh, those businesses that are growing or have the potential to grow. Uh, to grow. Um, we note that uh, in the last five years, um, the only place where Chautauqua County has seen job growth has been in those businesses with 10 to 99 employee, em, employees. Um, and we also know that in any economy, this is gonna blow some people's mind, but in any economy, less than 1% of all businesses are responsible for two thirds of the net new jobs in the region. I'll say that again, less than 1% are responsible for two thirds. We've got to zero in on who they are. They're your high growth firms. Something's happening there. And the county needs to attend to their needs so that they don't flee the border because they need to sustain their growth and you don't have what it takes to do that. So we think that the partnership is in a key opportunity to help these businesses scale up, particularly in the post COVID years. Uh, partners, partners here includes the Small Business Development Center at the JCC, the Chamber of Mass and others. Uh, here, it's all about digital connectivity, broadband, uh, trying to tackle the digital divide, particularly as there are more home-based businesses and startups. Here's an interesting statistic for you. Um, uh, remote workers in uh, Chautauqua County before COVID was 3.7%. Now, that's lower than the national average of five. But you know what? That 3.7 was higher than Western New York. So you've got to look at this in perspective. What do we have that's not happening in the, in the rest of the, uh, the Western part of the state? And how much of that can we capture and develop? And that's what that re uh, this report is all about. Uh, infrastructure improvements, uh, where the partners can be uh, playing a big, big, big role is um, in, in terms of advocacy with roads, water, sewer, um, uh, municipal efficiencies, and thinking through how that can happen. And then, of course, there's a role for the IDA as well. Uh, we see a, a, a big opportunity, actually, with new funds that have become available to capitalize revolving loan funds and to pump that capital out uh, into the community. Uh, to continue with the brownfield strategy. Already phase one has occurred and now phase two and three are going to uh, be rolling out uh, hopefully soon. And, and there's a role where the IDA can, and, and county leaders can help push it and diversifying agribusiness and focusing on export growth so that when we're uh, beyond COVID, we can take advantage of those fast growing markets around the world, uh, particularly in, in the ag business with uh, food processing, fruit, grape yield, um, hops and grains, and, and other things. All right, let's go to the next one, uh, workforce development. Workforce development and, and readiness, the game changer here, initiate and maintain a talent retention and attraction campaign. What I talked about, where, okay, we've known that uh, New York as a whole, upstate New York, and in particular, Western New York has had that brain drain for years, for decades, and we, we hit ourselves against the wall, why is this the case? Um, we believe that what uh, the county can do through leadership with the partnership and, and with, its, uh, with the leadership is to be able to um, prepare the, the, the young people coming out of uh, the high schools and in our post-secondary uh, education institutions uh, for the jobs that will be made available. One of the things about Chautauqua County is that um, it has a very low percentage of individuals who have a bachelor's degree, um, only 12% versus 17% uh, in Western New York and 20% for the US, but it has a higher percentage of those with associate's degrees. That makes sense because it's been correlated with the kind of economy and the jobs that have been there. And if we move forward, what we need to make sure is that the skills and the soft skills uh, the work readiness, the, much more of a focus on pre-K all the way through 12, that all of the students are receiving the critical uh, thinking, 
skills and the proficiency education that, that is needed. That's not to say that uh, you don't need a college degree, nor should you be uh, dissuaded from getting one. That's not what we're saying. We're saying is we need to be able to be singing from the same hymnal in terms of what it is that we're trying to do within our system to prepare students for the opportunities that we're going after. Uh, next page is a number here. Again, there are over 20 recommendations just in this, this category alone. Uh, we see the partnership, again, the logo there on the left, uh, playing a big role in, in, in providing real-time information from employers and with the school uh, with the schools. We also see this tying very, very closely to a coordinated business retention and expansion effort uh, that uh, we think the partnership can be instrumental in, in uh, launching. This is an enhanced effort from what you're doing already, really communicating with these businesses and getting that real-time information. Partners our partners, of course, here include the WIB, uh, the Workforce Investment Board, uh, the uh, Chautauqua County Education Coalition, Jamestown Community College, and, and, and all. Uh, but you can see here, we, we get into child care. We talk about the culture within the workplace, um, coordinating, better coordination with the community colleges, and more. Next. I'm going to move along a little, little quicker now because um, we're, we're losing some time here. Housing, the game changer. The game changer would be if you, we could bring on board 500 new housing units within the next 10 years. Sounds like to some a lot and to others not much, but uh, what's key here is not just the number, but the diversity, the types of units. And you'll note a few words there developed walkable communities, that's where it really ought to be targeted. Um, that would uh, newer well to uh, Dunkirk, and Jamestown, and, and, and other towns. Um, one of the greatest uh, components uh, to downtown revitalization is, is, is the housing stock. And so um, we really see that uh, uh, a critical need here is to have the diversity of the units um, to drive the foot traffic for the businesses, not only during the day, but in the evening and, and on the weekends. Um, but, so it's critical that we have strategies that, that link these two things together. So next in the other housing area, um, um, I talked about the focus on, on downtowns and the infrastructure, um, but the partners, partners can have a, a big role to play in looking at the code enforcement infill, do the local codes allow for the diversity I just talked about, talked about to be allowed? Can the vacant second and third floors uh, be converted for residential use? Um, the IDA, uh, county partners really, and I know Don's on the phone right now, you know, updating that comp plan and making sure that it's um, identifying the optimal sites and, and uh, vacant and underutilized buildings and dilapidated housing, making sure all of this is coming together with a focus on the young adults. It's kind of interesting that the county over the last um, decade or so has had net in-migration. People don't think about it because the overall population loss is a negative. So you've got some coming in but you have much of a lot. Why is that? Well, you have an older population and quite frankly, people are dying more than they're coming in. And so we need to figure out how to um, uh, provide the housing and the amenities that are gonna draw the younger family. Next, uh, community development. Game changer, produce 10% growth of tax revenue in core communities over seven years. We looked at the revenue sources and, and these would be the sales tax, the occupancy, uh, property tax um, and other um, fee, fee generating revenue, uh, permits and license fees, et cetera. If that were to grow by 10%, uh, that would make a big difference. Um, and this is only gonna come by having projects and initiatives that are place-based, that focus on business startups, that, 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 that vibrancy that is so needed, uh, that's mostly identified with the gig economy, arts and co culture and the livability. So uh, some recommendations here, 
Uh, you can see them there, more incentives, resources for storefront improvement. Uh, um, partners have a role here, of course. Uh, uh, the Gebbie Foundation, others, so many of are, are focusing on this in the report. We, we uh, pull it together as, as to how um, this can be done, showcasing local producers, particularly farm to table and food. Uh, E-communication processes for municipalities. Some of our municipalities are, are living in uh, a different world, a yes for world. And there's a lot that can be done to share information and bring things together and so forth and so on, as, as you can see here. Um, next, tourism just destination and development. Again, nothing surprising here for, for all of you in the county. This has been a major, major revenue producer. Uh, we talk about um, some of the initial steps, some of the some of the things that can be done to improve improve it. But the goal the goal ought to be to increase the total number of visitors to the county by fifty percent within five years. Come out of this COVID uh, with full head of steam, and um, you can find in the report some of this. Uh, uh, for instance, if if uh, the Chautauqua Institution, the world renowned, um, they are they are uh, just a treasure to behold and to have that in the county as everybody knows has, has been so great and they are a, a critical partner here as are so many others here um, and we produce for you uh, in the report the, through all of the um, uh, recommendations that we received some some thoughts on, on how, to, how to go about this I might say one thing about the last item uh, you see their combined resources to attract small group meetings. Um, Pre-COVID, people were talking about how Jamestown in particular might be uh, the spot for conventions. Um, we think that the sweet spot there might be groups of 250 to 300 people um, in, in the future when we're looking at this and, and how to go about developing that. All right, uh, then lastly, timeline and priority, the, the, uh, the report, um, breaks out all of these 90 some odd recommendations and I might add that there are probably two to three dozen organizational recommendations as well. Um, each one of these has a timeline and a priority. What's the highest? Get it done now or within the next year. What's a high, medium? It's all specified there. Um, and then we present a, a monitoring um, method so that the partnership can monitor whether there is in fact movement being made on this action plan. And then indicators. Um, we've produced uh, for the different five, um, uh, the five different work groups in five different areas, we've produced over 28 indicators that can be used to track performance to see if we're getting to where Alex showed you we need to be with the increase in the median household income and the decrease in poverty. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nate to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, I'll just talk briefly about, um, you know, really what is a condensed list of early wins and next steps before I hand it back over to Mark and County Executive Wendell for some concluding remarks. Some early wins, uh, we did develop a website chqpartnership.com which will become our you know economic development one stop with resources for uh, businesses looking to locate here expand uh, former residents or prospective residents looking for information uh, we did publish a recruitment brochure and that has a e uh, an online component as well um, We've obviously at this point finalized both stages of our strategy. Uh, we funded and filled, thanks to the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation and Economic Development Specialist position. Um, Monica Simpson is working closely with us, uh, not only focused on North County initiatives, but being a real asset to the partnership as a whole, focusing on those countywide game changers. Uh, we're proud that we've been actively convening our partners, even through COVID-19, our advisory council, our board, our five work groups. And even with funding uncertainty, we continue to develop those, not only those game changers, but those other critical initiatives that you outlined. 
so next steps, um, continue to, you know, take the momentum to the next level, build more collaboration among our partners. We're focusing on marketing and recruitment of not only talent, but people um, and businesses, developing a funding strategy, not only to support the partnership as an organization, but our priority projects. And we're laying the groundwork, you know, when you're talking about our game changers, I can point to several things for each item that we've already started to uh, put the pieces together to advance those. So more to come on that, even with uh, funding uncertainties at multiple levels. But uh, what's, what I'm proud of uh, and excited about, we have the implementation mechanism in place to avoid this thing sitting on the shelf collecting dust. We have the partnership and support behind it and we're con committed to monitoring our progress going forward. So Mark. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dan and Alex and, and Nate. You know, a couple of things uh, off the cuff here that I, I don't think that um, was really stressed is how much data is in this report. Um, it's, it's incredible the amount of, uh, of, of census and other data that um, really creates this, um, you know, quantitative look at our county, which really has formed the basis by which uh, these recommendations were created. So I think that's important to mention. And also, you know, we didn't mention the fact that uh, the consolidated funding application process uh, would normally take uh, part with uh, applications are due at the end of July has been delayed or maybe canceled. And that would typically be our main funding source for going after projects. And so the fact that it was delayed this year, um, you know, we're just going to have to tool up for next year. Obviously, we're going to do a lot of other projects that don't involve going through the CFA um, and initiatives as well. But, you know, that's, that's, that's put a little wrinkle in our, in our plans. But we're going to keep plugging away and uh, we'll be good to go, uh, certainly, for the next round. Um, so... Before, you know, I'll, I'll say a few closing remarks and then I'll, I'll uh, send it over to uh, PJ, uh, County Executive Wendell, uh, for, for concluding remarks. But, you know, again, I just want to thank everyone that participated in this process and to Kamoyne for laying out a solid path forward for the economic development efforts in Chautauqua County. I really do believe it's a new day for Chautauqua County and the stage is set, even with some additional obstacles, i.e. COVID. Uh, for us to move forward and achieve greater economic prosperity in all corners and sectors of our great county. Our work is just beginning, as Kamoyne said, but I'm confident in my team, in the partnerships we've developed, and I'm very encouraged by the increase in collaboration among communities, service providers, and funders in just a short time. And they've been very, really instrumental in uh, keeping the momentum going. Uh, this is nothing short of a call to action. You know, sometimes it's hard to say that, you know, um, that we're not, um, we're not trending in the right direction. Um, but we needed to say it, and, and we've come up with a strategy, and this is a call to action. We, uh, we must have some more, uh, support and buy-in from all of our economic development partners. In order to be successful, we will need each and every one of you to support the collective implementation of this strategy. It is critical that we all realize that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Now I'd like to hand it over to County Executive PJ Wendell to provide conclude, uh, concluding remarks. PJ? See all the wonderful things we have to offer. Senator Borello as well for having the, the vision uh, to get this moving forward. But I'd like to thank my economic development team and all those who participated in this process. You know, when other areas in the state, when we, we were on conference calls with leadership, we're looking at how will they regenerate their economy? What will they do with their economic development? And they were trying to create the things. They were reinventing the wheel. Uh, they didn't know what the wheel was. We did. When we looked at this, I reached out to Mark and the partnership was the infrastructure we needed and was already there and really helped to launch us. So that call to action in a sense was, uh, you know, kind of rallying the militia uh, in, in the first shots, you know, as we dealt with this COVID crisis is the groups were there, 
Uh, we called on each other and we started working quickly. So now this strategic plan is gonna be a huge part as we move forward. As we've said, we need a strong unity of effort. This is something I believed in from the very beginning and more so now moving forward than ever. But I'm confident we have the right people, the right providers and the right strategy and it's the right time to achieve these goals. Last week, I joined a meeting of a 12-person private sector partnership advisory council. And what struck me is we didn't ignore the challenges that were ahead of us. All of, all of our participants voiced their tremendous optimism for the future, looked at new opportunities and spoke creative ideas on how to build a stronger economy than we existed before COVID-19. But most of all, the collaboration and the unity of effort is what's exciting in this. You know, I'm confident that our comeback will be greater than our setback. You know, something that's really unique and it'll be coming out today is I've just been recently appointed to an intergovernmental advisory committee on broadband, knowing that broadband is a huge component of advancement here in Chautauqua County. So I'm excited that being part of this FCC committee nationwide of one of three county leaders uh, in all of the United States is gonna be bringing broadband. And my effort is to bring that back to Chautauqua County and really start the economic boom here by, as we said, bringing people back and, and noticing that in this post COVID, will we be able to work remotely and that broadband access will bring such huge dividends here to Chautauqua County. So I'm excited. I thank everyone for your efforts in this. Uh, Mark, especially our economic group, Nate and Monica and everyone who's been part of this have been very instrumental. And I'm just excited of what the future brings here in Chautauqua County. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Um, you know, that concludes today's presentation. Again, this presentation really only covered the tip of the iceberg here. I encourage you all to visit chqpartnership.org. If you click on the resources tab, you'll find a PDF copy of our final draft strategy. I encourage you to review that. If you have any additional comments, questions, please feel free to reach out to either Mark or myself. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.